What's up YouTube, my name's Ravlar and welcome back to another video. This time we've got February's Tips and Tricks. Now traditionally every single Tips and Tricks video I do a Bond giveaway and that's by me choosing my favourite comment in response to a question I set you guys. Now last month was a bit special, I asked you guys what your favourite RuneScape memory was and I was blown away with the amount of responses. You guys showed me so much love in the comments and I read all of them. But my favourite comment was by far this guy's Mr Bob Dylan who says his oldest memory was hooking up with his first RuneScape girlfriend, Great Gal X. If you're out there, he loves you baby girl, make sure you get in touch. But anyway, for this week's competition, I want you guys to tell me what is the luckiest you have ever been in this game. Now for me personally, I got a back to back to back Aram's top, which I don't know the exact drop rate of that, but I think that's bloody rare. Make sure you tell me your luck down below and hopefully you win a bond next time. But anyway, let's get on with today's video. So for today's first tip, I have a very useful teleport which goes right next to a bank and requires absolutely no items. So how to set this up is to go into your currency pouch and favourite the divination shards. This will make it so when you click on the currency pouch on the inventory, it shows up as one of your favourites. Now to access this teleport, all you need to do is click on this and it teleports you right next to the memorial of Guthix. And this is very conveniently located right next to a bank. Another good thing about this teleport is that it is unlimited and completely free. So go ahead and use this to your heart's content. Sticking on the same theme as teleport, the Draken's medallion is normally charged by going to Bird a Rot and submerging the medallion in a pool of blood in this little entrance. However, a recent update made it so that you can charge the medallion with congealed blood. Therefore, you can store a high amount of teleport charges in there and not worry about resubmerging it in Bird de Rock, whereas previously you could only hold a maximum of 10, which was very annoying. So this was a very welcome update. Next up, if you like to flex your quick chats, you're going to absolutely love this little tip here. Now normally, if you want to quick chat something, you go through the interface by pressing enter and enter again and searching for what you want. But sometimes you may want to quick chat the same thing again and again, and it's quite cumbersome to go through the options and interfaces to find that quick chat again. A quick way around this is that once you've quick chatted something, all you need to do is press enter and F12 and you will quick chat the same thing again. So hopefully if you're one of those people who likes to quick chat a lot, this tip will help you out. Now normally, if you want to recharge your summoning points, you need to drink a summoning flask, because even using a summoning obelisk does not restore your points to full. And this can be very annoying. But there is a way around this, and all you need to do is go to the fight kill entrance. A really quick way to get there is by using the topple zo, Right click the guy there and quick enter the fight. Once you're in the center, just go south and re-exit and you'll be there at the entrance again and you will have full summoning points. Now this can be very useful if you are trying to make cockatrice eggs with your spirit cobra familiar or you're trying to get papaya with your fruit bat. Alternatively, if you PVM and want a full spec bar for your titan, for example, this can be done very quickly. Overall, this will save you a lot of money with summoning pots in the long term and I really hope that you guys get use out of this tip. With the mining and smithing rework, shop runs were really nerfed hard and in particular, it's very difficult to get your hands on bladed components. Now, there is one shop which makes this relatively attainable and that is the Killer Poison Spear Shop in Karamja. Now I believe you need the Taibo One-Eye Trio quest to access this and once you have, you just head to the shop and buy out the spears up to Adamant. Now once you disassemble those spears, they give a lot of components including bladed parts, precise parts and direct parts. Now this is pretty damn good but it does take a couple of minutes to restock and during that time I highly recommend you disassemble something of your own 
and this way you can supplement your own disassembly with these cheap parts. Now whilst this is a good solution in this time where it's quite hard to get components, I really do hope that Jagex fix this and do make a viable way of getting components from either shop runs or smithing it yourself. But anyway, hopefully this helps you guys out. Next up, I have a small tip in regards to bladed dive. Now, normally when you bladed dive, you click the ability or press the keybind and click on a spot. But sometimes if you press the ability and then right click, it allows you to have much more precision with where you want to go. And I feel this helps me out a lot when I'm doing the rots tunnels or I'm at Virago or anywhere I need to be a bit careful where I dive. So that's if you press the ability and right click, you can right click and then activate where you want to go, giving you a bit more precision with where your mobility takes you. Now last episode, I mentioned a tip in regards to attuning your skill garden portals in the max guild to a fairy ring and the spirit tree in the tree gnome stronghold. Now if you wanted to save one of these slots for something else, what you could do is use your attuned crystal teleport seed to teleport to Cruis and then use the spirit tree there. If you choose to use the attuned crystal seed to get to a spirit tree, this means that you can replace the tree gnome stronghold teleport in your skilling portal and replace it with something more useful. Now sticking with the grace of the elves, one issue with this item before was that the porters were automatically used no matter what activity you did and this could be very annoying during some gathering skills like thieving and herb lore. But in a recent update they have added the option to disable the porter function on the grace of the elves and this makes it a lot better for skills where you don't want to use the porters but you still want to get access to the seren spirits and the rewards that they have to offer. If you're struggling with bank space, I really feel your pain, I've been there before and it really sucks. But one thing which could save you a lot of free space very quickly is to click the little trash icon on the bottom of your bank interface. Once you click this, a menu opens up and shows you all the items in your bank which you can destroy and reclaim at your convenience from the Diango tab in your bank. So if you have a lot of skilling outfits etc, they all show up here and deleting them could save a lot of bank space. Now, if you guys like to do a lot of AFK combat training, then I'm sure you guys are very fond of the Penance Aura, which basically means that you don't have to use prayers at a lot of different tasks. But an annoying thing about the Penance Aura is that it takes 50 and 100 Visfax to extend. Now, this is pretty trash as 100 Visfax only gets you one hour extra of the aura, and this is very expensive. Instead, a really cheap alternative that you could do is use your Reaper points and buy a tier 2 aura refresh. Now what this does is it allows you to reset your penance aura for another hour, which instead of using 100 Viswax can save you a lot of money in the long term. Now this also works for vampirism if you want to use that aura instead. Now for this week's final tip, I'm going to show you guys how you can maximize your profits from your Slayer tasks in the Sofanum Slayer dungeon. Now one thing I've hardly seen anyone do is utilize the Vital Spark Drop Enhancer which was made available with the release of ED2. Now this can be bought for 1k Dungeoneering tokens which is absolutely nothing because on token weekends for example you can farm up to 500 to 600k dungeoneering tokens an hour if you know what you're doing or on a normal weekend you can farm 200 to 300k tokens with real ease what this item does is basically it doubles any vital spark drops that you get and as they are quite expensive this is quite a nice chunk of change now to make this even more profitable what you can do is fill up your slayer chest in the dungeon with random items. Make sure that there are no vital sparks in there and once the chest is full, vital sparks will now drop on the floor and as a result of this they have a chance to be doubled which in combination with the enhancers adds up to quite a lot of profit per slayer task. In general I've had around 20 to 30 vital sparks in one slayer task before and this is actually really really good for farming these on my Iron Man but I suppose it's going to really help you guys out on Mainscape if you're looking for that extra GP when you're slaying. 
But that is about it guys, I really hope you enjoyed this month's version of Tips and Tricks. If it helped you out, please do let me know in the comments below, and if you're feeling generous, do drop a thumbs up and a subscription. Now a quick little note about what's happening on this channel currently, I have set myself a 100 day goal, and today is day 1 of this goal, and within these 100 days, I want to upload 30 quality videos to my channel and I'm really motivated to do so in order to repay you guys for all the love and support you've given me including supporting me to get the golden gnome so yeah I really hope you guys stick around for that and enjoy the content if you have any video suggestions please do leave them down below and as always I highly recommend to join my discord a great community there that really helps each other out and of course if you have any tips and tricks that you want to share please do I'll put them in these videos and it will really help the community out as a whole. But anyway guys, that's all for me for today. I'll see you in a couple of days. But for now, have a good one. To the outro. <laughs> Thank you for watching.